The Sanctuary is brought to you by Sanctuary, a digital marketing group. Visit us online at SanctuaryMG.com to receive more digital marketing tips and advice. Sarah, thank you for joining us today. I appreciate it so much. Yeah, you bet. Um, I was, it just made me think the last person I spoke with, her name was Alexa. And when I said her name the first time, <laughs> my Alexa went back and went crazy in the back room. So Dr. Fox from the University of Akron, I had to apologize. But uh, oh. we had to start over because oh, we jumped funny. right in and started immediately going. But hey, I don't think there's a there's a you, artificial intelligence that's named after Sarah yet. Oh, Not yeah. yet. Okay. Well, Sarah is uh, the I am. I pulled this directly from your uh, LinkedIn. This is what I usually do since I lack the creativity to do this myself. But <laughs> Sarah is the marketing director for I Squared R Power. Uh, before that, you were the director of marketing at the Stark County Mental Health and Addiction Recovery. Right. Uh, you were also VP of marketing at United Way, director mm -hmm. of marketing events at the Canton Chamber. Uh, head of communications, uh, global communications at Timken. Is that right? Or I wasn't I... head. I, I, I was. I did work there at the, yeah. in the communications department. Oh, in the community. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't want to. Uh, but long story short, you've had a a long career and a in a, a for a lot of great organizations that I think is going to be just a great conversation for us as mm -hmm. we dig into this process. Uh, can you share a little bit about what your role has been as you've moved into I Squared R recently? Sure, sure. I joined I Squared R two years ago, and um, it's it's been a pleasure because I was able to reunite with some former coworkers mm -hmm. and uh, help them move their business forward in a way that you know they were hoping to grow. So that's the track that we were on, this high growth uh, track, right before I call it BC, you know, before oh, coronavirus. Man. I mean, honestly, uh, it, it was just really, you know, we were, so we were on this high growth track. And so I was excited to bring the marketing uh, experience I had here with um, right. good folks and a good company. So, um, you know, well, you change. guys are, are you guys still an essential accounted as an essential bi business right now? Are you guys still operating? Yeah. We are operating is definitely considered an essential business. We're in the supply chain uh, to support military and defense. So okay, yeah. so can you explain a little bit about what the company mm -hmm. actually does when we're talking about? Yeah, even the name is an interesting name. It is. Uh, it is. Um, so Mike Penny, the founder, um, named it I squared R power because it is a, a formula for power loss. What we okay. do is. Um, uh, we do, we manufacture by hand um, electrical high currency electrical uh, equipment that is used in the metal casting and steel making business. Mm -hmm. um, so these these cables and and bus components and things are operate so hot that they many times need to be water cooled. Okay. And so there's a lot of engineering, and uh, you can imagine that equipment's just huge. But, right. Um, it's, it's exciting. It's interesting. I, I like the electrical component of it. Um, you know, and you mentioned you were on a high, you, you mentioned you were on a high uh, growth track there and that COVID has slowed that down right now. Is that because uh, mostly are, the, the contracts are just mostly rethinking where they would apply that type of science or is it that um, just everybody's just kind of holding their breath, waiting for things to return a little bit more, the supply well, chain to kind of return to normal? Mm -hmm. Sure, all of that. Um, I think um, it just took a bit for everyone to adjust, just right. like it took us, you know, a bit to adjust this organization and yours, I'm sure everywhere, yep. your homes, every everything's had to adjust. And so, you know, there was a little bit of a pause there. Um, but our leaders are really um, focused on uh, keeping everyone employed and keeping us mm -hmm. moving in a, in a growth direction, although it's not going to be the same kind of growth. We're going to focus on different things like processes and things you never right. have time to do. So, right. you, know, you know, again, Which... it, it goes back to um, the strengths, your company strengths and what you've always felt um, you know how to do and you do it well. And if you go back to those things and just keep keep on track, the strategy might change, but just keep moving, you know, keep moving forward. That's something I've always liked in, in our work together, you know, 
and we've really enjoyed it. And I feel like I've learned a lot because you, you're coming at it from a very disciplined approach and you, you're in a very entrepreneurial organization, a very fast paced organization. Mm -hmm. These guys are very smart. I've met them and they're also very strategic and very disciplined, but at the same time, the entrepreneurial spirit sometimes gets, gets a little rushed and to have that person who kind of helps, helps formulate a, a marketing strategy, even just hiring you is quite frankly, mm -hmm. very strategic in that way of, we know we need that marketing discipline rather than just going out and selling. Cause both are also great sales, natural salespeople right. that they get in front, in front of somebody that can close yeah. these, these deals, but you're adding a bit of, of, of strategy. Even your trade show process is much more disciplined than anything I've ever seen. I'd love to kind of speak you to speak about how you're looking at those processes going forward. Yeah. Yeah. Well, trade shows are just a huge part of what we're doing. Um, we get most of our leads through trade shows are incredibly important. Um, it's that opportunity to really speak with people and understand their needs and really, um, you know, a few moments just to really look at what their problems are and, you know, just really chat about that. So, um, and, you know, um, those industry friendships and those industry relationships are just critical um, right. as you're supporting a brand and really making sure that you're doing all those right steps to um, grow that, grow those relationships. So, um, how do you yeah, expect that I, to? How do you expect that to transition even over the short term, but also the long term? Has the acceleration in technology or this whole uh, the way we're communicating now is that do you expect that's going to play into the trade show process going forward or your marketing strategy going oh, forward? Yeah, I think I think it'll just be an added component. I think okay. we'll still have trade shows at some point. Yep. Um, you know, both of ours were canceled. Both of the big ones, right. at least our, our two major markets were canceled. Um, just this past couple of weeks. Um, and we, you know, we adapted, obviously everybody's adapting. And so we did something um, virtual. Yeah. And okay, virtual good. Ones, yeah. And, and that went well. I mean, it, it, we, we got as nearly as many um, entries as we would have if we were standing in the booth floor. What we wonderful. do miss though, is that interaction, that discussion. We're happy to, um, you know, hold events. We would just want to be in front of the customer. So can you explain a little bit, tell us a little bit about the, the virtual event that you did do? What, how did, how did that come out? What did you guys talk about? What did you show? What was that? Okay. So for several years, even before I came along, um, uh, our leaders had um, been giving away uh, a football hall of fame signed football. Right. Of course, you know, from Canton, we're proud of that. We're, you know, it's it's just another great place. If you come to the plant, it's a wonderful place to go visit too. Um, and uh, we just we just wanted to capitalize on that. And folks, there was a reputation of you know stopping by our booth just to see that football. Um, it fit our market um, demographics. The football did, and so you know we kept working with it. And it honestly we got so much positive feedback even last year um, through a pre-registration process that we uh, wanted to do uh, implemented that it was just a natural fit when the show was canceled we just thought well we'll just have this thing virtual you know right it, you know and, and we had as much participation nearly as much participation this year as we would have on the booth floor so that was exciting that was really good. So, did you were you able to have good exchanges with the the people participating in that? Were you were they just showing up for the football? Were they engaging with the actual content and, and the the subject matter that you're, that you're trying to have that discussion with them yeah. with? Well, again, it comes back to those relationships, and you're right about yeah. those conversations. So, we just had the drawing just last week, and so this uh, week, our new salesperson is likely going to be following up individually with every entrant. Right. And um, it, it, you know, it, <laughs> BC, you know, this our we had a new salesperson come on, great guy, oh, new sales gee. engineer, you know, and just to getting in the training mode and honest, uh, oh, poor guy, you know, couldn't get out on the road, couldn't make appointments. The appointments that right. were made got canceled. It was just, but this has been really fantastic for him. Um, he's been able to um, utilize um, 
technology just like we're using um, right. and and have virtual calls. So and we're ideally hoping- move a little faster, but still ha- hopefully have the same level of depth. See, I do think there's like, so the tool we're using right now, it's something called uh, EverWebinar or Webinar Jam. Um, it's, a, mm-hmm. it's a tool for vir- virtual webinars, virtual web conferences, talks like we're having here. But I'm wondering like with, with your organization, you could even be using this for the sales team to be able to show, well, here's our production or here's a diagram because you can pull up assets. I haven't really leveraged any of that with what, yeah. what we're doing here, yeah. but I would think for a virtual webinar, like, as you guys have done, you could say, oh, well, here's the here, here's how we do this system. And for a salesperson working one-on-one, it could almost be an advantage of, well, you couldn't see our plant before, you couldn't see all these things before, mm-hmm. but here I have this nice, yeah a set of assets that I can bring up on a call, show you, or we can diagram things out through tools. It might be an enabler that again, I think works in conjunction with face to face, because I don't think that's going to go away. We may be elbow bumping, but (laughs) traditional marketing is not going to go away. Yep. I know he's talked about taking um, the camera on the go and just, uh, you know, the call on the go and just go right out on the plant. Wow. and show folks I, it can be done so yeah um, it, it's just changing you know the way that we do th- the tactic it's still the yep. same strong strategy follow up and relationship building all that stuff stays the same it's just you know yeah. different tactics so, now you guys had taken part in a program you shared it with with us we were actually two tiny to be a part of it. But what was the name of that program that you guys had done that was it was an excel it was a growth acceleration program what was yeah. the name of that northeast ohio scalarator Okay. Yeah. Do you feel that that's kind of prepared you and are you able to apply some of those strategies? I say the word those weird, but are, are you able to apply some of those strategies oh, to sure. uh, what's it, going on right now? Yeah. yeah, it's in play. Hence the um, focus on if we don't have work coming in the door, then we're definitely focused on process, Great. you know, and marketing all that. So all that stuff that comes into play, anything related to um our growth and and being at the top of our game is is definitely fair play so you know we're taking advantage of this time you know we don't you know again it's all about your mindset the world can fall down all around you but if you don't want that to happen then move forward i really like that and that that it has been the uh, conversation we've been having with a couple clients and certainly the ones that are still moving forward it is it is almost a not a it's not a good thing, but it's a it's an opportunity to really tighten up some of the processes and preparing mm-hmm. that we're going to come out of this. Things are looking to be opening up, at least in a partial way in the next week or so here. But mm-hmm. things will be opening up and at least you can tighten those processes that we're working a little bit more and then be prepared that there's going to be some uh, bumpy roads ahead and then right. we go down into a. OK, so next time this happens, of it right. may not be a, fear of a shutdown, but what do we do next time to keep the sales chain going? Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm, so you guys really are leveraging that type of process. Absolutely. So, you know, it may not be in the order that we had designed, but right. we are getting to all those points that we needed to improve. So, yeah. How has it affected your clients? Would you say, are you, are you, is it affected mm-hmm. their supply, their supply chain? Or, you know, how have you been communicating with them? The ones that have placed orders, what's happened there? Yeah. So um, some of the plant or some of the uh, steel makers have actually closed their doors right. uh, you know, for several weeks, you know, again, to be determined, but um, some have, and some are the smaller uh, outfits have also closed their doors, but the ones that are remaining open, the ones we're, we're regularly interacting with those folks. Mm-hmm. Um, by staying in front of you know everybody's in their home office not everyone but most are in their home offices and and by um continuing to communicate don't hold up on that continue to um communicate um and that's why we're staying in front so if i'm not if i'm a small shop and i'm i'm at home because you know i've had to furlough my workers I'm, i'm still receiving emails and i still need to i do need to do some maintenance on some of my uh you know machinery so why wouldn't i consider maybe doing that at this time unless funds prohibit i'm going to consider things you know i'm going to consider it so as long as we stay in front of the folks as that first choice that's that's the most important thing 
Gotcha. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so you mentioned military as being uh, your, a lot of your clients right now. How is the other mix? Is it like you mentioned steel manufacturers and who yeah. are your clients generally speaking? So the, so the supplier chain kind of works like um, we are subcontractors of the larger steel organization who would okay. support the defense or we're, you know, metal casters, same way, you know, who we also serve. So, um, we're part we're down line down that chain line okay um, yeah so we you know um if your machine's not running or if you're you're not producing and you've got an electric outage or a, some kind of power failure um that's that's no good if you don't have a spare that's terrible um right. so you're out of work you're you've you've blown a heat and and you can't um you know, wasted production time. It's just, right. it's a terrible situation. So we can usually hop on and help. Um, we're flexible and nimble that way because we're a smaller group and we can shift things and, and, and help our customers. But um, it's important that we support and we're able to serve and ready to do that. So, we, you know, we've made many changes internally, so like um, shifts, uh, for lunch hours, you know, where you get uh, okay. temperature checks on the way in. I mean, you know, we've done all those things, put those things into place. So, um, so it's affected, it, one, it's affected how you guys do business internally, but you're also adapting and being flexible to the needs of what your clients are. You're, you're, you've had, to, you've definitely had to pivot. Absolutely. Um, Again, okay marketing comes back to marketing are you empathizing with what your customers are dealing with are you are you aware of the problems that they're facing or you know how can you best and because we're smaller and nimble we can as you put it pivot and right. and and really you know adapt to exactly what they need and we've been able to do that Okay. So what were, what were the main channels that you guys used to communicate? And, and was it just picking up the phone and getting out there and talking to your biggest clients, working down the list mm-hmm. and just seeing where their heads were at? Or Right. So we've been making phone calls. So um, uh, a little old school, but it's, you know, again, it's all about relationships. Yes, it is. And we, we do send emails, obviously, but um, it's about those relationships. And when we reach out to customers, every customer, because every customer has their own issues. Everyone's dealing with their own personal and, and, and business. And so the more times that we're able to touch, then we're, you know, we're able to develop a deeper relationship with that customer. And they're going to remember that long after all this is over, who called me, who was concerned about how my family and I were, um, fairing, you, yeah. you know, that that's going to be remembered. So I think that, um, you know, that, that tone of, of really of concern, because, you know, for a while there, it was pretty topsy turvy. There were daily changes, big changes mm-hmm. here in Ohio. Right. And, um, it, it really turned worlds upside down. And, um, and so as, as empathetic as we can be and as understanding and willing to listen to what the problems they're facing, the better we can adapt. I, I think that'll help us in the long run quite a bit. So quite that's, bit. so that's been, and that's kind of the thing we've been talking about too, is, you know, now is not the time to be pressing for a sale, so to speak, or to be continuing mm-hmm. on the deal. It's to find out, you know, how can you help and serve your clients in that manner? Um, yeah and where their needs are. And you're right. I'm on the personal side, you know, I'm kind of, you know, we've tried to be careful about delving too much into the personal side of, of how people are doing, because I think there is that emotional connection. You want to, sometimes I just want to respect people's privacy, but at the very mm-hmm. least as a business owner, I can relate to a, another business owner who is feeling the pain and the questions that they have to make, may, may have to make as far as furloughing or unemployment or anything yeah. like that of how are you going to deal with this and how are you getting through that? And that's, that's how we've tried to approach it is saying, Hey, what do you guys need in order to keep that, that messaging going? And we've had a lot of clients that are B2C, quite frankly, just, they can't do anything right now. So we're just yeah. trying to help them where we can. Um, sure. So what are your goals with, what, what do you think your priorities are going to be coming out of this? Um, like, do you have, have you got it? Like, okay, I see the end. I see the light at the end of the tunnel. I see where we're going. These mm-hmm. are our priorities coming into the summer. And this is what we, have you guys talked through that yet? Well, I, um, 
I think it goes back to our uh, original plan before this, before BC, before coronavirus, yeah. um, which was we were on that growth plan, that scalarator growth yeah. plan, and we we want to continue to stay that course. And I think we will, as long as we're paying attention and keeping in touch and keeping in front of our customers um, and and keeping in tune with what their needs are, we will be able to um, emerge as their number one choice. I, I firmly believe that, um, you know, as long as we're doing everything with a tone of, of uh, empathetic tone, concern, providing information that's genuine and, you know, um, and not certainly not um, being callous about yeah. this, you know, because there are people, I don't know anyone. However, there are others who have had family members or friends mm -hmm. or whatever affected and the worst thing to do would be to be callous about that. So, you know, yeah. again, it's just being empathetic, trying to be understanding, being flexible, most of all, and, and really able to try new things. So, you know, I have to say, we hopped on and bought a camera before they were all sold out, a, a wow. beautiful conference camera. You know, thank God we got that. Got yeah. one. But um, because they are all sold out. Um, yeah. And um, uh, it's been a wonderful thing, but just being able to, we didn't know how it was going to work exactly, but we knew what we wanted to see. So we just, you know, muddled through it and, and made it happen. And I, I guess what I would um, want to see is, um, again, it goes back to, and this is, comes from my mental health work. Um, mm -hmm. you, oh, gotta, yeah. you, gotta, you gotta look to the future. And your question was indeed about the future and, and what do you wanna see for that? And what is your vision for that? And how, how, do you, how are you gonna grow the company and continue to live the vision that you've seated for your company to uh, live that mission? And how are you gonna pull your, your um, colleagues through that? Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, you just, it, it doesn't change. Just keep doing the same things that you have been doing and look on your strengths to continue to move forward because you, you have built those strengths for a reason. And if you use them, you know, to pull yourself through that something like this pandemic, it, you'll be remembered for that. And, yeah. and you will emerge on the other side for your customers, for your employees, um, for your suppliers, you will emerge on the other side as that number one choice. I, I will say though, I think you are, your organization is, and I think we work with a lot of organizations in that same mindset. Um, you're unique in the fact that your process already builds in that empathetic nature, that in that that authenticity of, of understanding where the client is first before marketing at them. I think through this whole process, I've been getting emails, phone calls, things that have not considered that. It's almost as if businesses as of usual, it's a little annoying that you have to work from home, but not even taking into to account some of the challenges of, of like you're saying, personal. What's the health mm -hmm. factors associated with the person? Uh, what's some of the cash crunch decisions? And I'm noticing a lot of marketing coming at me and even at our clients that are just, it's almost tone deaf of, yeah. You got to, I got to make yeah. the numbers. Hey, we talked about this deal and you were going to get the software and you're going to try and sell it to your customers. That's like, yeah, that might be on pause right now. I hate to tell you, I know you got to hit this end of the quarter goal. But this isn't mm -hmm. going to happen this month. So mm -hmm. I think, I think that's where you're unique and you're coming at it of keep doing what you're, what you've been doing, but you've always been very understanding of who am I talking to? What's that conversation? Even, mm -hmm. well, you've done an interesting project when you first started there. Your first thing, what, what did you, I mean, talk through that. You did a thing of trying to understand the customer. I thought that was great. Can you right. share about well, that? I, um, we, I reached out with phone calls and we did a customer satisfaction survey right off the bat. I needed to understand what the problems were, what they had to overcome, what they liked about us, what they didn't like about us. And um, it really started our customer journey. And I was able to build a map based on that work. Um, plus all the other data points I was finding, and um, it really informed how we needed to move forward. So it, it, it's just fundamental marketing. <laughs> it is. It is. It's like common sense, but not everybody has it. So, but I mean, you do, you went so deep with that, and I mean, there's a 
I, I've always been attracted to, uh, um, like I'm in digital marketing, so I think a lot of people think it's new. And I have always just considered it direct marketing or traditional mm -hmm. marketing with a new medium. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, what I love about that is you're taking, uh, you certainly implemented digital as part of that process, but mm -hmm. you had authentic conversations and you started with asking the people, the sales team, what their thoughts were, but then you didn't stop right. there. You went back to the customers and right. heard what they had to say. And that, inf I think that informed completely the messaging, the tone, and it changed a lot of the assumptions that had you just been listening to the people who are already doing it, our customers want this you had your own view on that and you had data to pack mm -hmm. that up. Right. I thought that was fascinating. How many people did you guys talk to? Well, we were able to reach 50% of our hit list. And I wow. thought that was a miracle. Yeah. Um, really, truly, because people don't have time. I'm hoping, okay, just a thought. I'm hoping that people, this, this um, event will help change mindsets about what you have time for and what you don't yeah. have time for. Um, I know that, um, and you brought up where, you know, the digital marketing aspect. Um, I get people call or emailing me all the time about digital marketing. I can help you. We can help you. Da, 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 right. da. But I could ignore those or I could respond quickly. Right. And what I do is I respond quickly to let them know I, I don't need any help and, you know, basically stop, you know, right. I could not do that. I could, you know, just let it go. Um, right. But then it, it, I, I don't know, it's just a small little point, but I think it might help people really refocus their time and energy. Okay. I'm going to let this person go. I will take them off the list. <laughs> I'm not right. going to continue to bother this person. Um, right. and, and so it's just those little moments and in in, that influence our business decisions and how we conduct ourselves that I'm hoping we'll see a positive change in that, um, that we're more flexible, we're more understanding, we're, you know, um, better able to adapt, <laughs> you know, that's the best thing that could happen out of this pandemic. Well, I mean, that's a great point. I mean, cause the, a lot of the tools have the promise of scale. And we're never going to be back to the Mad Men days of where somebody's, you put an ad on Johnny Carson and right. 70 million people see it. And then great. Everybody's out buying, you know, uh, I'm not gonna, I was going to say Clorox. Oh, I already said Clorox, but considering topical, uh, everybody's out there buying it. Uh, so I think having that kind of exposure is something marketers always kind of go to. They want they get it, get a plan and they want to drive towards that mass market and go as wide and as far as they can. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and I think mm -hmm. this is forcing a a one-to-one -one interaction. Mm -hmm. While still scalable, it is something, mm -hmm. it's a it's a more unique experience and a much more niche uh conversation. You're not you're you're really, you know, if we're talking about basics of marketing, it's list, offer, and creative. And too many times people build up their lists too big to really have that conversation. And you started with who are my existing customers? And that mm -hmm. informed who you should be going after going forward. Mm -hmm. And that's what I loved about that is it's mm -hmm. very focused on that type of attention. Mm -hmm. um, have you noticed any, is, that, is there any marketing or any, have you been talking to your peers or anybody else of, of things that you've seen or some of the challenges they're facing right now or how they're going through that? Well, I mean, again, it, you know, I, I think everybody's trying to swim right now, not yeah. sink. Um, so, uh, I have talked with a few. I have watched some. I do try to keep up with um, um, uh, what peers are doing um, in several associations that, I, yeah. and I, they offer webinars and whatnot. And so I'm, I'm always kind of checking in to see what the pulse is. But most, mostly, um, it's just, especially in the PR field, it's just being nimble, being on your toes, and really, really, to your point, understanding who your customer is and how they're going to receive your message. So. Um, those tips, you know, again, it's just, if you're, if you're in marketing, don't forget to step into those other shoes and listen to that email that you just wrote from their perspective. And does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, I know I've been offended by some, um, yeah. I thought, oh man, they would just weren't thinking, 
And as you said, you know, they were just, um, you know, checking it off the list and, and that got done. So, you know, uh, but not with the results I'm, I'm sure they intended. Right. But, yeah. um, you know, again, I, I, you know. It's a challenge because people are preoccupied right now, even with their oh. own, even from the other side of it is like, I feel sometimes for the people sending out bad marketing. And sometimes I'm always self-conscious, like, did I send an email on that? You know, I'm always afraid that I'm doing those types of things. At the same time, I feel bad for the people who they're in a desperate situation. And sure. I, I think sure. one of the things I like what you're saying is like, you know, are we going to think deeper or think, be a little more, it's just going to change in the long run of one of us, maybe just being patient. You're showing an act of kindness by saying, Hey, you could keep marketing to me, but I work with Kelly Brown and sanctuary marketing and they are the best. No, I see. Uh, but, right, right, but right. That's a, that's an act of sometimes saying no is an act of kindness. And so that they exactly. aren't putting their engines on something that just quite frankly, isn't part of the discussion. Talk to you in six months, not, but at least sending that expectation yeah. is a kindness. And I think right. it's a, I, I, I'm hopeful of that too. Yeah, I, I think I think it um, again. It's that personalization. It's really understanding. Um, so I want to feel like you really understand what my needs are. Again, basic yeah. marketing, fundamental marketing, right. and I, I want to feel like the time that we're spending is really important, um, and that you really get what I'm trying to do. Um, Again, if 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 we can't offer our customers those personal points or those personal um, you know uh, touch points, yeah. I, it, it is just incredibly important. And and we can build that. I think we can build that today, even with um, just these conversations like you and I are having. Yeah. Um, uh, our sales, our new salesperson who is going to travel the world. <laughs> BC now is going to be um, operating with in our conference room with the um, conference camera. I mean, that's just the way it's going to be, but it's, it's going to meet some incredible people and yep. they're going to be um, and uh, expand his world beyond his belief. I mean, it's going to be great, but it's just going to be different. I think so too. I really do. I think I like you, I think it's going to introduce a permanent change in some things. But it's mm -hmm. also going to deepen the um, engagement when you are in yes. front of them. For instance, you and I have had conversations, but I don't think we've ever even gone this deep on some of these conversations um, to kind of explore your background and some of the some of your your deeper thought processes and glean them from several years of working together. But overall, this is the most time that I think you and I have really talked one on one about marketing. And how you mm -hmm. treat and how you plan those things, and I think that engage, type of engagement is an opportunity. And you don't have to spend so much time on a plane or in a car to get there. You can mm -hmm. have that. And then when we do meet, there's a more shared of uh, camaraderie. I think uh, of of how you're going to engage with that person. So I really yeah. do think that that's an opportunity for a salesperson. Plus, like you said, you guys bought a camera. I think mm -hmm. a lot of clients out there, a lot of people, they're now they they're on the thing and they're saying, well, in many respects, this is kind of great because then I don't have to entertain Kelly in my office or something and have that awkward thing while I wait for I bring in Mike and the other guy. And it's like it's it's you're just hey, we can have that. It's at ten thirty, and then guess what? He's out the door. It's gonna mm -hmm. end. Hey, you know, benefits. There are benefits. There's gonna be, but they're gonna remember all the efforts you took. I really yeah. believe customers will remember all these efforts that we took to stay engaged with them and listen to them. And, you know, again, it, it's a little awkward and we're all in this and it's a little awkward for everyone. Um, we've noticed that, um, especially our first few um, sales calls on virtually, yeah. um, you know, maybe, you know, we don't have the audio right or the camera. It's not, you know, right. you know, that's okay though, because the effort was made. We'll be remembered. We'll be and we all have felt that. I mean, that's the thing. We're all having that. Is my audio working? Like you and I were going back. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, right. That I think is also a shared experience that we can can talk through. Uh, so, as you've gone through this and you're working with your team on this, uh, what do you, what are your recommendations? Maybe coming out of this for another marketer or how they would do it. I think you kind of reinforced of saying it's one understanding the perspective and that they're coming from. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of exciting using this time for process. 
uh, and building, and then it's getting ready for the world after this and getting ready to engage in the real world. Is mm-hmm. there anything else you would recommend or think that you'd want to add on that front? To go, I would go back to your strategy. What, you know, this, all this change and adaptation can really spin you a little bit out of control. But if you go back to what your original strategy was, look at that and look for opportunities to maybe deliver different tactics. Mm-hmm. But the strategy is still good. And oh, most I love cases, that. You know, the strategy is still strong. Just figure out the, the, the method, how you're going to do it. But, um, you know, again, it just feels, um, feels a little uh, destabilizing. All this is very destabilizing, personally and professionally. But if you, if you have planned your year, there's no need to really reinvent the wheel unless there's some something you know obvious. But if you've got a strong strategy, you know you you have these goals in mind, just stick to those and figure out a different way to do it. So we don't have to change the business we're in just because we hit on this bump. We just have to adapt that business to that world. It's exactly. I read I read an article which relates to that. Um, I can't remember the source or any, but basically the the, the the framework of it was there's an electric car dealer. And the the last time, the 2008, when it hit, he decided, well, people aren't going to have as much money. Uh, granted, I've been selling luxury cars to all these people with a lot of money. I'm going to shift and I'm going to start selling a lot of cheaper cars. And he went out of business because he didn't stick with his own customer base. He didn't understand that his customer base still probably had those funds. They just may have been changing the dynamic of how they engage with it, payment mm-hmm. terms, whatever. But the people who were hardest hit were actually the lower income levels that were really inequitably hit, kind of like what's happening now. Mm-hmm. And they weren't buying at all. So mm-hmm. that ended up driving his business down because he pivoted too much. He didn't stay to his core of who he mm-hmm. was, who his customers were. And like you said, what's made you successful up until this point? How do you get there? And mm-hmm. so I, I think I really... That's kind of a challenge, I think, for a lot of people because you question, "Who am I right now? What what am I going to be?" Oh, yeah. And that's, but that is not changing who you guys are, how you guys are thinking. You like, we still know who we are. We had the benefit of going through this process of understanding who we are, but we don't think the environment changes that. It just changes maybe the short term of how we engage with those customers. Sure, absolutely. So, okay, yeah, three well, more. Well, thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. I always enjoy enjoy our conversations. Um, So if there's uh, ever a chance to talk with you again on this level, I'd love to do it. Uh, But other than that, I hope you enjoy your day and we can, uh, we'll take it from there. Well, great. Well, thank you, Kelly. This has been a pleasure as well. Thanks so much. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks again for being here with us. And we hope you enjoyed this episode of The Sanctuary. Check back often and visit us online at SanctuaryMG.com for more tips and advice around digital marketing and how to grow your business. Have a great week.